Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today's painting is another original one by me and it's inspired by somewhere called Mole River in Surrey. It's an area of the UK not very far from where we live. Now this painting was not without some troubles. I started off with a brilliant idea, great reference photographs, a good idea of how to tackle the subject and it all went swimmingly well for the first sort of three quarters of the painting. And then, like so many artists, I hit a bit of a sort of a dry spell in the old creative area. I just couldn't think about how I could bring the painting to a finish. This is something which I think a lot of artists suffer from. We have a great idea, but we don't quite get the planning done to the very end. We hope it's magically going to happen for us as we get towards the end of the painting. So, you know the routine. Sit back, relax notepads at the ready and see how this little painting evolves and changes and changes and changes again until I get it well right enough so happy painting everybody so here's my canvas it's 16 inches by 20 and you can see where I used a roller to change its color to black this left a bit of a mark let's flip that round so it's not such a distraction the other thing you can see is a little bit of a biro mark on here I was going to put a border on this canvas and change my mind, but it probably won't cause a problem, will it? Anyway, let's get started. I've got an old car sponge, a small filbert brush, and probably a liner brush as well, just for some detail. But I'm going to get going with this. This is white gesso, and a little bit of planning first. Take a small amount on that brush, and just do a little basic sketch. All I really need to know is, where is the horizon line? That looks a little bit steep, so I'll probably soften that up a little bit. It's a bit too sort of steep down to one side. And I think there should be a nice patch of light here and maybe a patch of light to the right with a few trees. So you can see a very detailed sketch. Some sunshine here and maybe just a little bit of sunshine peeking through on the other side. I don't really want those in my painting, so I'm going to use a baby wipe just to rub it out. Yes, you can rub off acrylic paint with a baby wipe. I got my old car sponge, and I'm going to just dip it into some of this white paint. Could be acrylic, could be gesso, it doesn't really matter. But stipple it out well, and those patches of light, I just want to build up that little brightness of colour here, and have the edges nice and textured. You'll see later on how much this textured paint really favours this style of work. My top tip is to turn that piece of foam rub around in your fingers occasionally so you don't end up making a regular pattern. And as we're painting a river, I want to reflect some of that light in the water. I set my canvas aside to dry for an hour, but when I came back I noticed that that pyro mark had somehow magically reappeared. I didn't think it would cause a problem. It didn't seem to matter how many times I went over it, it kept coming back. In fact, this was the painting after about five or six layers of white, and there it is. So, top tip, don't use biro on your canvas. So here's my fresh canvas, and again I'm starting with some black gesso and my small filbert brush and a liner brush. Just take a small amount of the black gesso and just plan where you think the trees need to be. I know I want one to the right, some to the left, and maybe a smaller one through the center. But take your time, plan where you want things to be. But all is not lost. You can always pick up your foam brush and just put some black or white back. Let it dry and start again. This is a very friendly style of painting and one that I encourage beginners to use. To thin my paint, I've added a few drops of water. I want the paint to be thin like ink so my sort of small liner brush can cope with it. I'm going to add some leaves to my branches so I don't need to paint every single detail of these trees. Just the main trunk and a few side branches will do. So here's my nice dry canvas. Make sure you leave it at least several hours before applying oils, which is the next step. 
I'm going to start with some of this Bob Ross Liquid Clear Oil Paint. I'm also going to be using two Bob Ross one inch brushes, a nice new one and a slightly old one for putting on the Liquid Clear. I'll be using a liner brush, a filbert brush and a fan brush. And of course, a Bob Ross palette knife. For ease of use, I keep my Liquid Clear in one of these little airtight containers. I use a small amount on my old one inch brush because I'm going to really scrub it into the canvas. So hang on to the side of your canvas. Make sure it doesn't jump around. And work it into the surface really well. We're looking for a very thin, even coat. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description for a video where I show you the technique. Make sure you cover all of the canvas. No dry spots. Here's my palette for today's painting. I'll list all the colours I'm using down below. But I'm going to start off with some titanium white and a very small amount of thalo blue. I want a soft pastel blue sky. Something not too overpowering. I'm going to be putting it over the areas I've already previously painted with the white gesso. Notice how I just twirl it on. Let those bristles spin. I want to create almost a slightly see-through effect with this blue sky. The idea is that you'll see some of the textured paint peeking through. Remember when we put it on with the sponge? I was creating a lovely textured surface. This technique works really well for creating lovely backlit scenes. It's a little bit like magic, but you'll see some more of that in just a moment. Take your time with this. Walk away from your canvas and look at the painting from the other side of the room regularly. Here you see I've gone back over it several times, increasing the value as I go. Now, time for some green. I'm going to go into sap green with that same brush. Maybe even add a little tiny drop of Indian yellow. Yes, that's the colour I need. I want a slightly lime coloured because I want this to look like it's backlit. So a slightly transparent green colour is perfect for this area. Again, I'm just going to twirl this in using the corner of my one inch brush. Scrub it well into the canvas. I actually want some of this background foliage to sort of get a bit of a colour as well. But I want it to be very softly coloured. It wants to look soft and distant. I can't use the word softly enough really for this part of the painting. But now you can see once again how that textured background that I put on with the sponge really comes into its own right. Everywhere a little bit of paint catches, it produces a bright lime green dot. Exactly as you would do if you have light shining through some trees and bushes from the back. I can't say how pleased I was with this part of my painting. I was pretty ecstatic to be honest. And the more I played with it, the better it started to look. Now don't worry about those trees, they're still there, they just need to tidy up. I also thought to add some of this green colour to the surface of the water. It would obviously be reflecting some of this colour down onto the surface. And again, I just used a very, very thin, thin layer of paint, scrubbed in very well. I'll start at the darkest area first and then stray over towards the lighter areas, but careful not to kill off all that lovely reflected blue colour from the sky. Next, I'll mix up some black and some sap green. I want a deep voice green colour for this next section, which is to put some bushes at the very base, just above the waterline. I'll even add a little bit of phthalo blue into it. Mix it up really well with your palette knife. Now, going back to my old brush still, I'm going to go into this dark green colour and as you do, load your brush on one side, give it a little push. You want to make a nice little ridge of paint ahead of the bristles. So in this part of my painting, I want to deepen the area of colour. I want some little overhanging branches too, to make it look like this is a little further forward in the painting and the back little areas are sitting further back. Again, careful not to cover up that lovely uh, work we did earlier on. Notice how I tip my brush 
on one corner. Not completely over, just favoring one corner and tapping. I'm creating a deep green textured paint onto which I can get some highlights to stick. I'll deepen these areas as well with that lovely dark green color. Now, time to switch to a fresh brush. I've got my nice, clean, new brush for highlights into some sap green and some cad yellow. Maybe a touch of Indian yellow as well. Notice how I pull the paint out with my brush and then again, slide the brush forward into that color, creating a little ridge of paint ahead of the bristles. If I flip my brush round, you'll see that back of my brush is still open and lacy. And I'm gonna go right into this area here with my brush. Just touch gently. Every time you touch, you want to leave a little speckled dot of color here and there. So every time you touch, you create a little branch. It's a nice simple technique, but one you need to practice. My top tip is don't go over it again and again and again to try and fix it or to improve it. Invariably all that happens is it just becomes muddy. Notice how I tipped my brush to the opposite corner for the right hand side of that background tree. Reload your brush frequently and let the bristles do the work for you. That lovely deep shade there I'm going to keep. Now think about light peeking over the top of that riverbank, just catching the top of a couple of those bushes. So let's make a very bright highlight color. This time I'll take a small amount of titanium white into my nice bright green color. Always save your brightest highlights for the very end of the section of painting you're working on. If you start too bright, then you've nowhere else to go. I just want to catch a few of these little bushes. Once again, take regular steps away from your painting. Oh, go on, I can't resist putting a few little sparklers on this area too, but not too many, just here and there. Now, I want to pull down some of that dark green colour to make a lovely reflection on the surface of the water. Pull down gently. Maybe give your brush a bit of a dry clean and then you want to be brushing across from edge to center. That's it. Just gently disturb that paint, give it that nice watery look. Don't go over it too many times though, because it does tend to become very sort of mushy. That's it. I think that's about perfect. I'm going to create a nice little riverbank for the far side of my painting. This time I'm using black with some dark sienna a deep chocolatey brown colour to underpaint the rocks or maybe even a muddy riverbank. Take a small roll on the edge of your palette knife and just drag the knife at a sort of flat angle really. I'm sort of imagine I'm buttering a very very thin little biscuit. Once again don't worry about those trees we'll fix those later on. To highlight my riverbank I'm going to use some of that base colour the dark sienna and black mixture another little bit of dark sienna to the side of it, and some yellow ochre. Now loosely mix them together. This is called marble mixing, because when you gather up a small roll of paint, it's sort of partly mixed, and as you drag the knife across the canvas, it sort of unravels, but with a sort of a random abstract sort of pattern, especially where the light from the background would strike the top of a bank or some rocks. Be very gentle with your knife, it just needs a very, very light touch when you do this. Once again, I tend not to go over it too many times because it tends to just all become one sort of flat color, just sort of a pale caramel color. And I'll keep that lovely dark shadowy area right in the very center. I'll add a little bit of this color to my reflection. Once again, just grab the edge of the bank, pull down and then across gently. The finishing touch is just to add a few touches of highlight over the edge of the rocks. It just softens it into the painting and makes it all fit together really well. Time to add some highlights onto the surface of the water. I've got some of that grubby titanium white paint and a little bit of that thalo blue color and just get a tiny roll of paint. Now, hold the knife nice and level and just touch and rub against the surface of the canvas. I want to put in a water line but nothing too bright. Remember, this is all deep in the shadowy areas. 
So I'll rub my knife over it a couple of times, but I do want to sort of create the illusion of a little bit of reflected light from the surface of the water. This looks particularly effective in that dark area of my painting. Once again, it's a little bit like magic doing this. The more you do, the better it looks. Let's repair our trees. I'm going to use a cotton bud just to wipe off the surplus paint that covered over those trunks. I'll darken them up again using some black and some dark sienna. This technique is a bit like painting the riverbank in the background, except you're just redarkening the tree trunks. If you don't get on with your palette knife so well, you can always use a filbert brush. I want some thinner branches for my foreground trees, so I've added a couple of drops of thinners to that dark brown black mixture. Roll your brush in the paint, which should be thin like ink, and just here and there, add the odd branch, but don't add too many. We're going to be putting foliage on top of it, so you'll be covering up most of your hard work. Just as we did with the background trees and bushes, Firstly, I need to underpaint this foliage with some of that dark green mixture I made earlier. Remember, a highlight colour is thin and oily, and it will stick to the underpainting, which is that dark green colour, which is very stiff and dry. A thin paint sticks to a thick paint. Here you see, I'm adding my highlights. They should stick very easily. But if they don't, add the tiniest drop of thinners to your paint. That's to the highlight colour, not the underpainting. Let's add a touch of highlight to my tree trunks. I'm going to use a little bit of that marble mixture colour. And I think the right hand side of this tree trunk should get just a sparkler here and there. That light tapping action produces the most amazing tree trunks. When they're dry and you run your finger across them, it feels just like bark. I'll add a little bit of highlight these trees as well. For my foreground I'm going to use some of this dark green colour again on my old one inch brush. I still haven't cleaned it, it's working quite well. This time I load my paint by pushing into that dark colour and I just want to tap on some of this dark green colour to sort of texture the riverbank and add a little bit of land under the trees on the right hand side, complete with a reflection. To highlight my grassy riverbank I go back to my nice brush. And again, push into some of that bright green highlighting colour. I think it should be brightest here, directly opposite the brightest part on the bank opposite. I used light tapping action just to produce a nice grassy effect. Follow the lay of the land and save a few areas of dark here and there. For the small area river bank under the trees, I'll use the corner of my one inch brush just to tap in the idea of some low growing bushes, maybe some ferns. I add a few drops of thinners to my dark green colour and use my liner brush to add some grasses and some details. I think that will finish my painting off quite well. Or will it? I'll add a, some grasses here and maybe a few over here. I'll try a few light ones with the edge of my palette knife too, just for good measure. No, it just wasn't inspiring me. I'll scrape it all off and I'll start again and do a better job. Right, back to my highlighting brush again. More grass, more contours, um, maybe some flowers. Yeah, that's what it needs, more flowers. But the real problem was that my inspiration had dried up. So this is the point in my painting where I just had had enough. I walked away a little frustrated, downbeaten even. I hadn't been able to produce the finished painting in one session, but it's okay take the night off. Fresh pair of eyes in the morning and you see the painting completely differently. And it's my advice. Don't get frustrated. Take a break. It's so easy just to work ourselves into a frenzy and then disappointment and then we can't seem to do anything right. So let's see how my painting finally finished. Well, you can see how it finally finished, but how did I get there in the end? So sit back and relax for the last bit 
And don't forget, if you like these paintings and all the information you get from me, you can always like and subscribe. Just leave a comment if you want to too. It's really appreciated and it helps my channel grow so much. Thank you. So here's my canvas after a night's rest. And even with fresh eyes, I'm still not very happy with it. I'm not particularly happy with this or this or that. Well, any of it. Let's just take off this whole section. Let's have a go at scraping off the paint. As you see, it's started to dry overnight to the point where it's, well, just too, just too tacky and you can't really get it off. But that's actually an advantage. It's nice and textured, so we'll be able to get some fresh paint to stick. I'll salvage what I can from my palette and start again. I like the colour on the far riverbank, the dark brown colour with the marble mix on top. So I'll start by making some nice dark brown colour with some sienna and some black. Let's create some nice rocks for a bit of structure. Something a little bit more interesting for the eyes to look at. I'll add a rock here. Maybe I'll give him a little friend here. And directly opposite, maybe a couple more rocks. And to link the two up, I think we're going to be putting in, yes, a pathway. Something to take your eye to the water's edge. A little bit more marble mix colour, just as we did on the background, and just light touching onto the top of this rock. Just let the knife bounce. Now my top tip, give your eyes something to really focus on. A bright spot on the top of this rock will lead your eye into the distance of your painting. I try and put at least one interesting spot into a painting, just so your eye knows where to look. Your paintings should be like a guided tour for the viewer. Just that you're not there to do the work. So you have to make sure your painting guides the person to where you want them to look next. Let's drop in our pathway. Again, I don't want to compete too much with my rocks and stones, but it must be interesting. I play around with my colors until I get something that I like. To settle that into my painting, I use my fan brush and some of those bright yellows and light colours with some greens. Stab in a few little bits of interesting foliage just to soften up the edges of those rocks and the pathway. I even managed to salvage my signature from yesterday when I thought I'd finished it as best I could. And just like that, my painting is suddenly restored and I'm once again happy with my work. So there you have it. Moor River in Surrey, a beautiful river walk and maybe one that should inspire you to paint your own version of this painting. And just to keep you going, there's another couple of paintings coming right along. Happy painting you people! Mm -hmm.